What is up people and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the concept of ingress and ingress controllers in Kubernetes. I'm going to take you through the concepts, the terminology and then show you an example of how this all works. So let's get cracking. In a previous video, I have described how services talk to one another using Kubernetes services. If you have not checked out that video, make sure to check the link in the description. It is quite critical to understand the traffic flow within Kubernetes. Now, ingresses are all about serving traffic to the outside world. Although a Kubernetes service can have a public IP, um, it's not really recommended to serve every service on its own public IP and have to do all the DNS work. So a lot of companies use ingresses as like an API gateway. So they can have their domain exposed and then bind their DNS um, and then use URL write, um, writing and redirect and rewrite to basically point traffic to their services in Kubernetes. So when pods or containers talk to each other in Kubernetes, they, they call each other over a service and service provides the DNS as well. And then you can see here, so we have a pod inside a namespace. It makes an HTTP call, which then routes to our um, target pods. And then same way across namespaces, pods can also access each other through the service annotation. Now in the ingress world, um, things work very similarly. So we have this namespace bar, and just like previously, we have a pod talking to our service, um, and then that routes to our deployment. So pod to pod traffic using a service. Now what the ingress does is it has a concept of ingress controller. So we replace this pod with an ingress controller. Now the ingress controller is just the proxy. You can deploy HA proxy, there's Nginx, there's traffic, Envoy, there's all of these modern um, web proxies that are able to run as ingress controllers. And the idea is a developer can then just write ingress rule. So they don't need to know HA proxy, they don't need to know Nginx, they don't need to know traffic, they don't need to know any of this proxy configuration. All they need to do is write a small YAML file that says, I want my traffic routing to look like this. And then Kubernetes will go and configure whatever proxy you have running inside here in the ingress controller. So to give you an example, we have a um, foocompany.com and here we have a foo service. So a customer makes a URL um, to this ingress controller. Now in this case, we're using URL rewriting. So to make a decision, so based off this, we can write an ingress rule to say anything that says slash foo service, come through to this service and then go to the deployment. Similarly, we can have a different style routing where we say foo service dot foo company dot com. So we can have it slightly different um, route based off the domain name instead of the path. In addition to this, if we had another service, so let's say we have bar service we can define another ingress rule to say anything coming to foocompany.com slash bar service. And we can do a separate routing to say, go to another service called HTTP bar and route to a different pod. So this allows us to deploy multiple microservices and serve it through a single ingress controller. So this is very similar to like an API gateway. Now, make sure you check the link down in the des um, description because I have a guide starting from zero all the way through to getting Kubernetes services up and running. So it's all the way from installing Kubernetes on Windows, configuring kubectl, because what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have kubectl configured to point to your local Kubernetes cluster on Docker. And then what we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go up to deploying a service. So if I say kubectl, get ns, I have a namespace with my name and then I can say kubectl and I can pass in my name as a namespace and I can say get um, pods. I have this example deployment running and then I also service that up um, using a example service. So this is a Kubernetes service that points to my two pods and that serves it over local host. Now, I don't have any ingress controllers running um, at the moment. So what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is deploy an ingress controller. So take a look at this folder, Kubernetes. I have ingress and I have a controller folder. In the controller folder is an implementation of traffic as a, as a 
um, ingress controller now you can pick any kind of one that you want um, go over to their website their github repo they have all the example yamls so in this case what we're going to want to do is say kubectl apply um, and i'm going to pass in the file so i'm going to say kubernetes and i want to pass in the ingress um, the controller so i'm going to apply all this yaml now it's gone ahead and created the config map for the traffic configuration it's created a service account, a deployment, a service, and some um, role bindings. So basically, this allows the ingress controller to look at ingress rules. And we're going to apply an ingress rule now to say, how do we want to expose our example pod to the public? So if I say kubectl and I look at the kube system namespace, because that's where I'm deployed my ingress controller, and I do get pods, you can see we have an ingress controller now up and running. So this ingress controller looks for all these types of rules. So if I say kubectl in my namespace and I say get ingress, you can see I don't have an ingress deployed. So what does this allow us to do now? Now the ingress controller is a once-off thing. You deploy it to your cluster and your cluster operations team needs to make sure the version is up to date and they look after the health of this guy. This is now our API gateway. So what a developer wants to do is once they have a pod running and they have a service, they can define this ingress rule. Now notice here that I'm only exposing HTTP. I'm not redirecting and forcing redirect to HTTPS because I don't have SSL configured. So locally, I have a host file entry. Um, so if we open up the host file, you can go into C, Windows, System32, Drivers, EDC, open up the host file. And if we open that up, you can see I've added an entry here for my domain pointing to local host. So this is pretending to, like I have a DNS uh, called that. And what we do now, a developer, all they need to do is specify um, an ingress. So here we can create an ingress, we can call it example service. Um, we, we say here that we want to use traffic. So you can have multiple ingress controllers and specify which one you want to use. And here we say, this is a, a basic, how to send traffic from an ingress controller through to a pod. So notice here now, I as a developer don't need to understand traffic, um, you know, proxy. I don't have to understand ingress, how to control like Nginx or how to configure HA proxy. All I do is I say, I want to rule for this host and I want to serve HTTP on that path to that service. So that is very simple and you can have different paths. So you can have like API slash um, book if you have a booking service. So you can have different URL rewrites here. Now in this case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl apply and I'm going to apply this to my namespace because my service is inside this namespace. And I'm going to say Kubernetes ingress and I want to apply this ingress YAML. And we have to specify dash F. Now our ingress is created. Now when we create this ingress rule, the ingress controller is constantly watching for updates. So it'll be notified that this ingress rule has been created and that traffic proxy will reconfigure itself automatically. So all I need to do now is go to my DNS. So here I've gone over to this local DNS and it's routed through using the ingress proxy um, automatically. So this is, this is quite cool. So it allows you to have like um, a, a, a DNS exposed to the public. You can have SSL exposed. You can have an SSL service like Let's Encrypt exposed. And you can then write your URL. So I can go like API and I can go to my, like my booking service. Or I can go to my uh, shopping cart. Like if I, had a, if I had a shopping cart, I could go to that service. Um, or I could go to like a search search engine if I wanted to. So this is basically now my API gateway that manages all the traffic through to the back ends and without developer having to know how to configure a proxy. So hopefully that helps you guys demystify ingress controllers and how ingress rules and things work in general in Kubernetes. If you guys have any questions or any other topics you'd like me to discuss, please leave a comment below, like and subscribe and until next time, Peace.